What are the best techniques to anchor at the sandbar? Well, there is actually a system that you can use to make sure you aren't the one floating back into someone else's boat or hitting the ground whenever you want to anchor at the sandbar or at any beach. This week's contest prize is a Fortress FX7 anchor. And the best thing about these anchors are how light they are. This thing only weighs 4 pounds so it makes it super easy to pull back up out of the water. Whenever you are pulling up to the sandbar or to any beach, you are going to want to know how to do a few crucial things to turn your trip into an absolute success. Before we get into the process of actually anchoring though, we need to just cover a couple of different styles of anchors that you can use. We won't bore you by going through the many, many different types of anchors that have been used over the years. Just the five most common anchors for a sandbar, being the Bruce, the Delta, the Danforth, the Rockna, and the Grapnel. The Bruce or Claw Anchor is just a good, really common, all-around anchor. They don't do so well in clay or hard mud, but it's a great anchor. The Danforth or the Fluke Anchor, though, is probably the most common anchor used for boats under roughly 30 feet. It's what the fortresses are, and it's what we will be using for our anchor at the sandbar because they are best for using in sand or mud. The Delta or Plow is another great anchor, but it's usually found on boats that are bigger than 30 feet and probably good up to around 50 footers. They don't do so hot on really rocky bottoms though, but everything else they are pretty good on. The Grapnel Hook Anchor is best for being used in rivers or somewhere where there is a really strong current, they really hook up and hold well. Then the last most common anchor is going to be the Rockna or the Spade which is basically a sharp plow anchor with a roll bar on top of it. They are expensive, but they say that they have the best holding power of all the types. Those are the most common anchors that you will see or have, and any one of those are going to be just fine for anchoring at the sandbar. Now depending on where you live and what the bottom and water conditions are like, there are a couple of different ways to park the boat and be able to get in and out comfortably. Which is the main point of this video, you don't want the sandbar trip to be a nightmare and no one likes to look like a fool when they pull up on the water. So getting in and out of the boat easily is going to be key. Now on lakes, bays, and other small or calmer bodies of water, you will see a lot of people just beaching the boat. There's nothing wrong with this, as long as it's nice soft sand and you don't have a tide to worry about, you'll be all good. To do this, you just ease up to the beach or the spot on the beach that's open and lightly float up until you hit the bottom. Once you've got the bow of the boat on the beach, you can give the engine a little throttle in forward gear. This will push the bow up onto the sand and hold the boat right in place. Then to get off the beach, depending on how many people you have, you want to put the boat in reverse and pull it off the beach before everyone gets on. You can also have people stand on the back of the boat and carefully push the boat off the beach that way too. This puts the weight in the back of the boat where it's still floating and helps to lift the bow off the beach. Just don't be the person that has the bow completely loaded up with people and is just revving the engine up to 4000 RPMs in reverse trying to get the boat off the beach. Just move the people to the back and pull off smoothly. Now when you are dealing with some small waves and changing tides, beaching the boat isn't the best idea unless you are prepared to hang out until the tide changes back 12 hours later. Which isn't always a bad thing, we have spots down here or over in the Bahamas where you can float in at high tide and then anchor up and trim your engines up, then let the tide go out the boat will sink down and just sit on the sand until the tide comes back up. Then you drive right back out. You just have to plan the all day event because once the tides go out, you're stuck for 12 hours. So if you are battling tides and waves, it's best to turn the boat around and have the bow facing the oncoming waves and leave the boat far enough out into the water to account for the changing tides. Backing up can be difficult for some that haven't gotten the chance to do a lot of practicing yet, which is why we've made a video to help you out if that's the case. And you can check that out by clicking over to that video at the end of this video. 
The key here is to be prepared before getting to the sandbar. Have your anchor out and ready. If you have a bow rail, make sure the anchor has been pulled through the rail and back over it, so you can throw the anchor out when you're ready. This goes for your second anchor as well, and we'll cover that in a minute. With the anchors ready, you figure out where you are going to pull in and turn the boat around so that the back of the boat is pointing toward the spot. You want to be careful of everyone else's anchor lines though too. Now throw the anchor out so that all the chain is out and under the water and pull the boat backwards very slowly. Pull on the anchor rope until you feel the anchor catch, but make sure you let out the chain so that it lays flat on the bottom of the sandbar. If the rope is too tight, it won't allow for the bow to go up and down with the incoming waves and it will pull the bow down into the water. In smaller boats, this could be really bad, so make sure you have plenty of line out to let the boat go up and down. Once you feel the anchor catch though, you can let line out to allow the boat to float back into the spot you want it to be in. Floating it back until you get the back of the boat into about 2 or 3 feet of water making it easy to get in and out of the boat. Then you can take that second anchor and I just take a cheap small Danforth anchor with a long dock line on it and we'll attach that to the back cleat and get out of the boat pulling that line back and setting the anchor in the sand. This holds the back of the boat from floating back and forth, keeping the boat set in place. This same system can be used to get out and adventure any beach, sandbar, island, or anywhere you want to get out and look at. It keeps the boat from swaying all over the place, hitting other boats, and it makes it really easy to get in and out. It's really important to have that long line out in the front though, so that you can make adjustments as the tide goes in or out. When it starts going out, you can just pull in more line every hour or so to keep the back of the boat from hitting the ground, and vice versa when the tide comes in. Just let more line out and pull your back anchor farther into the sandbar. Now whenever it's time to leave, make sure you've got everything in the boat and put away. so nothing can blow out whenever you take off. And make sure it's a rule for whoever the captain is to physically go to the back of the boat and ensure that the ladder has been brought back into the boat. With the ladder in and everything put away, have someone in the front of the boat pulling up the line as the driver creeps the boat forward until the boat is directly over the anchor and you can successfully pull the anchor up and drop it in the water a couple of times to clean off the sand. Now just move away from the sandbar and take off. Another trick that you should know about when it comes to this kind of stuff, whenever you're going to moor up on a reef or on a ball, have someone in the front of the boat pointing to wherever the ball and line is, then once you get onto the ball, have them pull up the line with a hook Now to make this easy to get off, the best way to attach the boat to the ball is to take another long dock line and the longer the better. You don't want a short line because it will pull the bow of the boat down into the water with the waves and you could potentially sink the boat. So the longer the better. But you attach that line to the cleat like this. Then just run the other end of the line through the loop in the mooring ball line and tie the end of the line to the cleat like we normally tie a cleat. Now whenever it's time to go, you can just undo the knot on the cleat and let the line run out and it will pull itself out of the mooring ball line, then we can just pull the line back into the boat and we're off the ball. Don't forget to check out this video here to help you improve your boat handling skills. And drop a comment below to let us know about what kind of fiasco you have seen before when someone was trying to anchor at the sandbar. Include a hashtag fortress for your chance to win the FX7 
and we look forward to seeing you next week.